Hi everyone, welcome to episode number 21 of the Bill Podcast and today we'll be going through Grunt.js. This is a command line build tool. So if you go to the Grunt.js main homepage, we will see that it has a very one-liner description along with several useful links and, uh, and also an easy one-liner command line to install Grunt.js. Also, we can see that it has over 200 plugins that we can use to build, automate, and have some tasks uh, easily done through this Grunt.js. So let's look at uh, the GitHub documentation. Over here, it will clearly link to a lot of uh, important build-in tasks and also installation and example guides. And also, if we actually go through the GitHub repository of Grunt.js, we will see that a lot of the plugins and many other associative uh, repositories are linked here. So I highly recommend you to go through the GitHub repositories of Grunt.js as well as the main page uh, to find some plugins and other related links. So a brief overview about what is a build tool like Grunt.js. So typically we use a build tool for automation while we are developing our software. Things like let's say compiling or packaging, running some tests or deploying will enable us uh, to have some tasks automated or have it in a faster manner and Grunt.js is one of them. And uh, for this project, um, this episode's project, we'll be doing something about uh, reset and normalize CSS. So we will not be building the project, but we'll be creating some associative task that will allow us to use the build tool and automate very quickly using Grunt.js. So let me explain firstly a little bit about this project. As usual in build podcast, we will not have any project, um, but also have a project to learn something. So this project is for us to learn about uh, CSS reset versus CSS normalize. So usually in uh, CSS, we will have some kind of base code uh, to start off our own project code. And over here, uh, two typical ones use are reset and normalize. So reset was created by Eric Meyer and normalize was created by Nicholas Gallagher. I have linked in both of them in the show notes. So do go and check it out. So all I've done is um, a bit of a check boxes as well. So let's say in reset, you can see that uh, if only the header is selected, how does the headers look like? Whereas if you select normalize, how do the normalize uh, look like? And if you go to paragraph, you can also see that, hey, the paragraphs uh, look like this, or you can also choose some block code. For example, in normalize, the block code is a little bit indented, whereas in reset is not. Right, so I hope you like this project and also will learn something out of it. And uh, so let's get started with our project and uh, run some build task with Grunt.js. Right, so to do that, I will come back to my desktop. Over here, I have already made a folder and this folder has uh, some related, uh, the CSS base project that I just talked about. So if I open it up in Sublime Text, it will show us that, hey, we have uh, index.html and inside this, we have the navigation, the red navigation bar. And inside, uh, after that, we have a class called container with all the headers and the paragraphs and the block code and so on and so forth. Very easy. And um, above it, we have a normalize.css linked, which will of course be manipulated using JavaScript to also load reset.css as the user choose. But more importantly, we also have style.css, some kind of base styles for the red navigation bar. And also at the bottom, we are referring to the jQuery and then script.js to kind of manipulate our DOM. So over here, if you look other than index.html, we also have the JavaScript file, which is main.js. Typically, we would want to minify this file so that in the production, our code is a lot uh, shorter. And also in CSS, we will see several files, for example, the HTML5 five boilerplate and then we have some helper class the main css which has the project specific styles and of course the normalize and css 
Now, typically, instead of uh, loading so many CSS, we would want to concatenate this uh, through a build tool. So let's get started with grunt.js. Now, firstly, for grunt.js, we will need the node package manager. So to do that, I'll just check npm-v, or you can go to node package manager website to download node. And then uh, I will install grunt. So I will install it globally. So I'll do sudo npm install dash g for global and then grunt. Now I have already done that. So I'll exit it, but you go ahead and do it. And after that, when you want to check whether grunt is installed, just do grunt dash dash version. And that will give us the latest version of grunt right here. This means that our grunt is installed. All right, so next, uh, a very helpful command will be grunt dash dash help. This will give you all the commands that you can use along with grunt. Right, and lastly, I would also like to point out if you do npm find and then grunt plugin, it will give us all the 200 over grunt plugins that there is in a very neat and command line form. And here we see all the list of grunt plugins. We will use some of them later. All right, so to do that, uh, how to get started, we will do grunt init. And over here, we will get an error because it does not find the grunt configuration file. So what we will do is grunt init, and then we will put in the project name. Now over here, by default, we will see few project names. We have a jQuery, if you want to create a jQuery plugin, a node, a common JS, or even a grunt plugin. Now for our project, or even for any projects in general, if you just want to use grunt for normal build processes, I will just do grunt and then file. And immediately after our command grunt init grunt file, they will ask us some questions so that they can churn out the grunt file configuration. So I will say yes, because the DOM is definitely involved. Yes, the files will be minified and concatenated. And I will not have a package.json file. Do you need to make any more changes? No. And once you do that, now if you look at the tree, we will see a new file created grunt.js. Very clean, nothing else but just a grunt.js file. So let's go ahead and look at this file. Now to make it a little bit clearer on what is happening, I will just delete away some of the code. Over here you see that first part there is a grunt configuration and next part there are some default tasks. So let's go ahead and look at grunt configuration. The first block is called the meta block, which consists of some of the project name and uh, some information. So that should just stay. Now next block is the lint block. If you are trying to have some kind of code quality check, we'll be using some kind of linting. Otherwise, for this project, I will just remove it. Next there is QUnit. And uh, we will also not be using QUnit. QUnit is typically used for testing, so I will remove it. Next, there is Concat. Now, this is something we will be using. Over here, you see Concat has two uh, things they're asking for, source and the destination. And here, we will be including the Concat files because our CSS files will be concatenated. So let me go ahead and uh, change the source here. Right, so I have inserted in the source files. There are three of them, and under CSS, it is the boilerplate CSS, the main CSS, and the helper CSS. Next is the destination parameter, and over here, I will add in CSS, but the name is style.css. And if we come back to index.html, over here, we will see that, hey, we are referring to style.css. So that is what a concat will do. Now let's come back to our command line and uh, see if we run grunt and then concat, what happens? There you go. You have that uh, file style.css is created. And if we go back to our text editor, we will see that hey, a style.css is created by concatenating all the files. And finally, if we come back to the browser, if we look at our current project inside the desktop, at first we did not have a style, but now if I refresh it, there you go, the styles are there. So this is a very quick way to concatenate our files. The next one that we'll do is minification. 
Over here, it um, acts quite similarly, the syntax, uh, to the concatenation. So our source file in this case will be main.js. And of course, our final destination, as we wrote in index.html, it will be script.js. So let me go ahead and change the minified source and destination parameters right here. And there you go js main.js as the source file and the destination is script.js now obviously if you see here script.js is not created yet now what i'll do is i'll go back to my terminal and this time i will run grunt min and notice here there you go the file is created and we have a script.js which is totally minified very cool Next, what we like to do is have a bit of a clean command, which will remove away this uh, script and style.css because these are build files. To do that, we will refer back to our grunt.js documentation. And this time we will look for a plugin and the plugin is called Contrib. A uh, Contrib plugin will include a lot of uh, build commands and the one that we are looking for is contrib dash clean so let's go ahead and have a look at it so we will go to the github repository and uh, it will have the documentation on how to use um, clean here so there you go you have npm install grunt contrib clean or in our case we can also just install npm install grunt contrib which will come with everything else and then we have to put in npm tasks so that we can load the module. And finally, we will add in this um, in our repository, grunt.js. So let me first go ahead and do this. npm install grunt contrib dash clean. So firstly, back to the command line and I will install a node package called grunt dash contrib. And after it's installed, if we come back to our project folder, we will see, hey, the grunt contrib file has been loaded. So after that, right at the top of our grunt.js, we have to include this node file. And we will do it with load npm task grunt dash contrib. So after that, we will go ahead and uh, alphabetically, I'll just uh, put in the clean command. And if we come back to the browser, this is exactly they have told us how to do it. So clean and then build. I don't think we need the release but uh, we will just put that in. Under build, I will remove two files, uh, js, script.js, and css, style.css. Right, so there you have it, build, and uh, then we are cleaning it. So now let's come back to our command line, and this time we will do grunt and then clean. And there you go, it says that cleaning the JS and the CSS file. And if we come back to our text editor, we will not see those files again. So quite a neat way to remove files and clean it up. Now next down the line, uh, we have covered meta, clean, concat. Uh, we also have watch. So what does a watch do? Uh, imagine uh, we are always coming back to the terminal and putting in the grant command and going back again. Now the watch will allow us to just uh, watch the files and the moment we save, it will update it immediately with any error message or so and so forth. So firstly, let me go ahead and add in the files. And in our simple project, we will obviously just be watching the CSS folder and the JavaScript folder. And I have put an asterisk to denote that all the JS and the CSS files only. And what are the tasks? Uh, we will include concat and then we will also include min. So this kind of refers back to the tasks that are being explained in the JS file. So I have referred concat here and the mean from here. So let's see what happens when we do that. So now if we say grunt and then watch, it will not exit, uh, but it will just keep watching. So let's see what happens. So let me just go back to main.css and instead of color white for the text, for the text that we see right here, I will try to put in yellow. And uh, in my command line, we will immediately see that, hey, the file has changed. And if I come to my browser and refresh it, I will see yellow color. So this is exactly what the watch does. We don't have to keep going back to the terminal to refresh and refresh. All right. And uh, pretty cool once again. So I'll just exit it with uh, control C. 
Next, we will try to add in another grunt plugin, and that is a spell checker. Quite neat. So if we once again search for spell under the grunt uh, main homepage, and if we click for the grunt page, it will give us to the spell grunt page. And let's just go to the GitHub page. And in GitHub, it will have very similar instructions to our previous plugin. It will ask us to install it, npm install, and then add it right at the top. So le let us do that. So npm install grunt spell. So I'll come back to my command line and install it. and ensure that the grunt spell folder is included under node modules. Next, I will come back right at the top and include the grunt load npm task for spell. And finally, some configurations in spell. So let me go ahead and copy this and add in to our grunt.js folder. So like I said, I like to do it in alphabetical order. So I'll just do it before watch. For just for the sake of demo, I will include just the index.html and our language will be en for English. We will not ignore any words in particular, right? And now let's go back to the command line and run grunt spell. And it will give us some error and even suggestions. So a pretty neat tool once again. Finally, let's go through the rest of the file. We will not use any kind of uh, code quality checker so I'll just delete this and uh, let's go through the last line grunt register task default so what does this do so in our uh, command line grunt.js has given us a very useful command which is grunt so if we kind of click this what if we want to have a lot of the build tools task for example clean concat minify spell check everything all together well this is what uh, grunt will enable us to do so let me go ahead and edit it slightly so let's say whenever we click grunt i just want the concat and minification to occur maybe the clean as well so you clean first and then you concat and minify so now if i just run grunt there you go it will run all the three processes together it will run the clean then the concat and then the minification and when we come back here this is exactly where we define it now lastly uh, before we end we will go through another way of registering the task and this time I will try to create a publish folder now usually in our uh, deployment to the server in a website we do not want a lot of uh, the development files in this case it will be a lot of the unconcatenated files for example BP helper main and we also do not want main.js. So in this case, we would want to create a folder called publish, and then we want to have index.html and only the needed files for style sheet and do that. So firstly, we will create a copy command for the grunt. And what this says is uh, very similar to the previous ones. Uh, I have some files, and here I will say publish index.html. And this is basically the destination and this is the source file. So notice I'm only copying in the files that will go to my deployment. All right, so after we have it, um, I'm gonna now create a task and call it pub for publish. So register task and then pub. And let's say over here, I will do a clean and then concat min and then copy so that I have a folder of publish ready to be deployed to our web server. So I'll come back to my command line and this time I will do grunt and pub. Let's see what happens. Right, so there you go. I have all the four tasks this time all happening. And now if I go back to my task uh, project folder, there you have it, a very clean publish folder that is all ready. Right, so I hope you had a good overview about uh, grunt.js, which is a very neat uh, command line tool. It says here for JavaScript object, but I have found its value beyond JavaScript as well. So do go ahead and look at grunt.js for your daily command line build tool for your projects. All right, finally, and before we just say goodbye, I would like to introduce you to 
two other build tools worth your exploration. One of them is by GNU Make, which resides in your Mac OS operating systems. It is definitely another build tool worth learning. Maybe I'll do a build podcast on it one day as well. And uh, do check this out. And the other one is Rake by uh, based on the Ruby programming language. It is also a build program with the capabilities similar to Make. So do check out these two projects, uh, which has a very firm concept about what a build tool is. Right, finally, and for the build link of the episode, it is called Distilled Hype. So Distilled Hype is a very neat website. It gives you a lot of uh, resources for premium links for front-end developers, Distilled Latest Hype by Hello Kahil. Right, so a huge thank uh, to Kahil for making this uh, little snippet of website that is very resourceful. So I highly recommend you to either subscribe to the newsletter or subscribe or even follow Kahil on the Twitter. Right, so that's it for this week's episode of Build Podcast. I hope you learned something about Build Tool and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.